Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Qualsys webinar. We are very excited to have everyone on today. And uh, as we get started and everyone gets logged in and gets uh, to the point where they can see the screen, uh, we will make sure that you can hear us okay and make sure that uh, everything's working okay. My name is Jeremy McLaren. Um, I'm in charge of marketing here for Qualsys. Um, I've also got Lauren Salmon here with, working with our builder program um, on the line, and uh, as well as Madison Bolt from Alarm.com. Madison, say hello to everyone. Hi, everyone. Yes, as Jeremy mentioned, I am on the Alarm.com side. I'm actually part of our strategic sales team and heading up our builder program. So really happy to be a part of this webinar today with Qualsys. And we appreciate you joining in. Madison's joining in from the East Coast. We're, we're, we're calling in from our uh, Utah office here at Qualsys. And uh, before we begin, and as everyone's getting logged in, we want to do a couple housekeeping things. First off, direct your attention to the GoToWebinar control panel that you're using to view the webinar today. There should be some uh, things on there that um, allow you to interact with us. Because we have so many people on the webinar today, we certainly can't have um, uh, everyone talking all at the same time. So we've got everyone logged in initially as muted. And uh, if you have a question or a comment, we don't want uh, to miss that. So if you'll direct your attention to that control panel, there should be something called chat or questions on there. If you find that, uh, you should be able to type out a message to us. And we've got Kelsey Wing in the marketing department here, um, who normally joins the webinars with me. She'll be helping to answer questions. And Lauren's going to be watching the questions as well here. Um, so type in your questions, type in your um, comments and things like that, and we'd love to talk about them here on the air. Mark, welcome to the webinar today. I'm glad you found you. I find it. Chris, looks like you found the, uh, the chat question as well. I got a question for you guys. Uh, Qual Qualsys stands for Quality of Life Systems, and I want to know, to improve your quality of life over this past weekend, you did what? I am curious to know what you did. Um, I'll share with you what I did uh, for just a brief moment before we get started. And I don't know what you did, Madison, but I actually went down to Moab, Utah, uh, which is kind of the off-road mecca of, of the nation. And uh, the Jeep Jamboree was going on. Uh, I didn't participate in that particular Jamboree, but we did do several trails, including one called uh, Top of the World. And I got to park my Jeep on a rock over top of a probably 700-foot cliff and took a picture looking down over the top of this crazy 700-foot cliff. It was pretty crazy and intense and, and a lot of fun. So I got to go off-roading all weekend with, with a couple of my closest buddies. What about you, Madison? What did you do? Oh, Jeremy, I, I think your story definitely beats mine. I was just uh, at home relaxing this weekend trying to fight off a cold. Um, but... Uh, yeah, that sounds awesome. I'm really jealous. <laughs> well, you know what? Quality of life sometimes means relaxing and taking in all your favorite Netflix shows. I totally appreciate that. Is that is absolutely looks like, true. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Mark went hiking. He went uh, hiked close to the Deschutes River in Bend, Oregon. That sounds like fun. Um, and uh, Chris coached some girls basketball. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Brad mowed his lawn and played some squash. Nice. Uh, Tim enjoyed lots of football. Um, Shane said he found one day to relax. He said relaxing is on his bucket list. Yeah, I, I hear you there, buddy. <laughs> We're getting pretty busy. Uh, oh, Paul improved his quality of life by cleaning his garage and his shed. Um, and uh, Chris spent some work, did some work around the house for a Halloween party. It should make life easier on Wednesday and spent all day planting plants. So, oh, wow, lots of comments here. Uh, Ed took his son to the park and the pumpkin patch. You know, I still haven't been to a pumpkin patch with my kids yet. I feel bad. I need to do that. Jeff ate some tacos and slept. Boy, I'm kind of jealous about that. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Paul repaired the dishwasher. Talk about quality of life. Now, no more complaining about dirty dishes. That's, that's a good thing, right? Uh, Eric went to the Penn State game. Great. Nice to hear that. John played bass guitar at church and celebrated his granddaughter's first birthday. Um, very nice. John Rent uh, read a book on Ritz Carlton, the new gold standard. Oh, I, I've heard that's a great book, John. I, I've been meaning to pick that up. Uh, Richard said that his wife set him up with a new table on, on the patio, had a thousand parts, and he put that all together. Oh, I bet that was fun. And then John played some golf. So I'm so glad to hear that you guys are having fun on the weekends. That's what it's about, right? You know, we work hard during the week, and then we have to do something fun on the weekend. So keep those comments coming in. We love that. Um, well, I would say let's go ahead and get started. Um, 
just to, for those of you that are wondering or want to be able to share this with others, we are recording this webinar today. It will be on our YouTube page later on. And in the email that you get tomorrow, Kelsey will make sure that you get a link to that video as well so that uh, you can rewatch it, share it with friends, et cetera. So hopefully we get some good information. And that same chat thing that you used to at, you know, put in what you did this weekend will be used for questions and comments. So please don't hesitate. Pop your questions in there. We want to hear it. We want your participation. We want to know what you think of this and make sure that this is something that works well. So on to the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about building smarter and safer homes. And we're going to start with the market landscape. Madison, there's a lot of new houses being built, aren't there? We're certainly out of the woods in terms of the, the decline in builds um, over the past few years. We're now on a steady increase. A lot of these are, are creating some awesome opportunity, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, that's why you all have joined today. You're aware of the uh, great opportunity in the single family housing market. You know, uh, 1.29 million new housing starts as of last October, and that number is just continuing to grow year over year. And one thing, too, that I like to point out, and really what is a great opportunity in this particular market, is just the adoption rate. Um, nearly 40% of homeowners that are moving into new homes uh, want some type of professional monitoring within that first year, which is really the highest adoption rate across any other housing segment. So definitely a lot of opportunities to get in there, um, work with builders, and a lot of upsell opportunities as well. You know, I'm glad you brought up that adoption rate because I think it's really relevant here. I, you know, Dealers are work, wanting to work with builders, but what they don't want to do is just put in some equipment and then never hear from them again. So this creates an awesome opportunity for you as a dealer to say, hey, I'm going to gather some good new customers off of this and hopefully some even referrals off of this. I've actually seen the more you invest into your model home, the higher that number becomes. Um, I haven't seen official numbers yet, but I've heard some circumstantial numbers that some of our dealers are saying that in the on the DR Horton side of things, where the, and we'll talk about that today, that they're seeing upwards of a 60% um, uh, take rate on some of those systems too. So, you know, whatever that rate is, whether it's 40, 60, or, or somewhere even higher, you know, the opportunity definitely exists. And again, that's why you're here today. Uh, that's what we want to talk about it. So let's share some data that we got from the Tech Home Builder Market Poll Survey. This is the 2018 survey, so it's very recent data. This is builder attitudes about technology. Look at some of these numbers. Absolutely astounding. So the green represents totally agree with the statement, and the gray is that they agree somewhat with the statement. The first one there, that's almost 100% there, right? Our company can increase profit by, per home profit by offering innovative technology solutions and amenities. Everyone's agreeing with that. Uh, you know, whether they somewhat agree or totally agree, they all agree that that's an opportunity there, right? Our company can increase per home revenue by offering innovative technology, even higher percentage. Builders need to offer technology uh, to baby boomers, and that's, that percentage is totally agree is smaller, but look at it with millennials. A huge percentage. And in my experience, the millennials are the ones who are the majority of the home buying people out there anyway. They're the ones who are now having babies. They're the ones who have got the good job now and they're looking to you know move out of their apartment and get into something bigger and more established so 60 percent agree that i need to have a great solution for millennials otherwise i miss that opportunity the one that i think is really interesting and that we'd like to pay the most attention to is every home we build should have a standard home automation system of some store, sort included what is that 45 plus 37 that's what 80 something percent standard you're talking if you're talking to a builder right now there's a very good chance that they believe that that should be a standard offer. Now, what does that mean for you? I think, and Madison, correct me if I'm wrong, if they're offering it standard, that doesn't mean that they're offering it as, do you want carpet or do you not want carpet? They're saying, you get carpet. The question is, how much carpet are you going to get? You're, not, you're no longer talking about, do you want to buy this system from me? You're now talking about, what do you want to buy? What components do you want to be a standard offer versus what are going to be upgrades, things like that? If we've moved past the am I going to offer a security system stage of a relationship, and now we know we're getting a security system, an automation system in the home. The question is how much, right? Let's see if there's any comments or, or questions about that. Nope, nope, not so far. Okay, let's keep going. Look at the last one there. Our, 
our company is substantially more interested in offering innovative technology options and amenities than three years ago. 73% totally agree with that statement. So you've got a lot of interest from the builders, right? However, that doesn't come um, without some confusion from the builders, right? They, you know, what do you want to install? And, and during the survey, they asked, what is it that you want to install? The first, the top one was structured wiring systems. I don't know if this is because this is what they need the most or just because they know about or what. Um, but the second one there is alarm system, okay? That's awesome. Now, again, look at the, the percentage here. The gray represents the average percentage included in 2018. The green represents the average that will be included by 2020. So you can see there's some big jumps there. People that weren't offering locks as much, that's, there's going to be a big jump to that. Home automation systems, video surveillance systems. So all of these represent things that, you know, in fact, most, if not all, these are things that you guys can do. So if builders are wanting this stuff and they're wanting to include more of it by 2020, again, this all equals tremendous opportunities for you. Then the next one is, you know, well, how, who's going to pay for it, right? You know, are they going to expect me to pay for it and then wait and wait and wait to get paid or things like that? They're actually building that right into the price of the home. You look at 2018, 8.2% of the home was attributed to some sort of technology, okay? By next year, it's going to be 9.8, and you can see that number just continues to increase. So if you're worried about how am I going to get paid, how, you know, are they going to expect me to put it in the house and then wait for months and months and months to do it? Maybe, maybe not. That's something that you're going to need to work out with the, with the builder, and we'll talk about how to do that later on in, in the webinar today. I want to spend a little bit of time on pain points. I thought this was really interesting. This is open-ended responses from builders on what, why they didn't want to put um, technology in, the pain points or the frustrations they had with it. And I took that list and I broke it up into to five categories. Problems with the dealer and installer, problems with the user experience, problem with the technology itself, problem with the cost, and problem with the builder's staff, okay? And let's talk about each of these for a second, um, and then hopefully uh, we'll help you resolve all of these for your builders uh, throughout the remainder of the presentation. So the first one, from a dealer and installer standpoint, again, this is how you deal with either the client or you deal with the builder themselves. Being willing to work on smaller systems and not expecting every job to be a big dollar project. Customer service. Designing a system that's easy to use with training for the end user. Installers being up to speed on the latest, latest tech and voice control. Post install support is lacking. Scheduling on our time frame, showing up on time. Too much tech talk with my customers. Waiting for the owner of the connect, waiting on the owner for connectivity. All these things are things that you as a dealer um, and installer could potentially fix. And again, I'm not saying that these are things that tech home or the builders were saying that security dealers had. This was just technology dealers and installers in general. So I think that we, as a smarter, more capable group, can go to our builders and say, these concerns you have in terms of me aren't concerns, okay? I am work, willing to work on smaller systems. I've got great customer service. I'm going to design a system that, that's easy to use. We're going to use the Qualtas panel and the Alarm.com platform. It's so easy. Your customer's going to love it, okay? Um, post install support, we've got plenty of it, you know, and you'll be able to help your, your builder know that these are not going to be issues with you. User experience, okay? Can't explain the benefits to the buyer. Training homeowners properly. Clients not understanding how to operate it. Communication to non-technical clients. Consumer fear and re reluctance to accept change. Designers and installers not thinking through the aesthetics of the final product. We talk on webinars all the time about how looks matter, right? Too complicated or confusing for the client. Homeowners expected the builders to fix problems instead of troubleshooting. You know, so all of that lending into the, to a poor user experience, and again, builders are saying, if I've got a poor user experience, it's going to come to bite me, and people are going to not want to buy my home, or they're not going to refer their friends. So if you can help them with these, and again, all these things, I think, are solvable through either the Alarm.com platform, the intuitive and um, easy-to-use nature of the, of the Qualsys platform, uh, and or your ability as a dealer slash installer to help your customer figure this stuff out. Um, technology is the next section there. Compatibility of systems and the changing technology standards. We, we talk about that all the time with the IQ panel and how you can overcome some of those 3G to 4G problems and, uh, you know, the ability to use different radios for security and things like that. Keeping it simple with affordable security and tech solutions that talk to each other. Compatibility is really, really important. 
staying current and up to date. Uh, my systems never work. Clients are part-time vacation work, work users. Every time they arrive at the house, I have to go to the AV guys to get the house to work. You know, of course, all that technology not working right, if you're using the wrong solution, it's going to cause problems. So having that the right technology is definitely the right choice. And we'll talk about that later on as well. From a cost perspective, builders were complaining about clients not being willing to invest money, clients' perception of what it should cost, um, cost not being consistent between companies, too many options, not seeing the value after seeing the pricing, um, finding a company that doesn't overcharge for traditional automation, um, and installers not listening to or understanding the needs of the clients or, you know, things like that. So uh, from a cost perspective, I think you guys can be very, very competitive, especially knowing what some of these guys are complaining about, some of the solutions they might be complaining, panels and, and touch screens that cost thousands of dollars for each one. Um, you know, you could offer a solution that is really, really affordable for the customer uh, that will give them a lot of what they're looking for. And then, of course, the last one there, build, the builder staff needing equal training and knowledge across all employees. Both Qualsys and Alarm.com have a lot of training resources you can leverage to help get those staff up to speed. And you need better in, uh, direction and influence from the experts. We don't know what we don't know and would love to someone to tell us what the market wants and how to implement it. And hopefully, throughout this presentation, you guys will understand that well enough that you can then take that to the builder and say, we are the expert, we can do this for you. So a lot of great, great feedback here. Uh, Madison, any comments on these? No, I, I definitely think you hit the nail on the head there, Jeremy. Obviously, these are pain points that, that builders really have about technology and why they might be hesitant in implementing some type of standard within uh, their, their uh, program. So, Definitely uh, something that we can all address, um, either utilizing the Qualsys and Alarm.com resources or just by nature of having that professional installer like yourselves as a dealer. So definitely things to keep in mind and we'll be addressing some of the things um, that Qualsys and Alarm.com can do to help you address these things as well. Yep. So we got a couple good questions here. So John wants to know, could you expand on what you mean by too much tech talk with my customers? Now, these are open-ended responses, John, so I don't know exactly what they meant. But my guess is I have been in situations where a dealer uh, or installer uses terminology from their massive library of education and a, almost pseudo assumes, and whether they do it because they want to sound smart or, they, or because the, um, you know, they – just simply assume that everybody kind of talks that way, you know, they'll say things like, well, over here's your Z-Wave, you know, because it's using Z-Wave, you know, well, does the customer know what Z-Wave is? You know, well, what we're going to do is we're gonna, this has got an LTE radio. Do they know what that means? You know, dumbing it down a little bit in some cases isn't a bad thing. You know, if you say too much tech talk with your customer, you know, does that technician talk a little bit over their head? Um, and this, you know, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but this is probably questions you need to ask your technicians when you're talking to your consumers, you know, are they making the assumption that that consumer's already been educated? Probably not, you know, so talking in a way that what are the things that specifically relate to the consumer that they can talk about um, and what terms should they be using? Should they be using industry specific terms? And there's no problem with using industry specific terms. Z-Wave, for example, is a great term to use. You could say, all this connects with Z-Wave technology. Z-Wave is a proprietary protocol. It's basically a, a radio frequency that's specially made for lights, locks, service sets, and things like that. It really works well inside a home environment like yours, and it allows you to have a bunch of devices, and the more devices you add, the stronger and better your network goes, which means your performance is gonna go better and better. So in a nutshell, Z-Wave is, is a special technology that your devices are gonna use that's gonna make everything work really well in your home. You know, a description like that where you give them some background and things like that. If you want to go that much in depth, you can. Or you could just simply say, don't worry, all the stuff we're going to install today has technology built into it that's going to make it work really well and be really easy to use. Uh, I'll make sure of that before we leave today. And you can go that way. So that's what I think it means. Um, if you guys maybe have another idea of things, please share them. I'd love to hear them. Um, Paul says, I find builders are afraid to build technology into the price of home. In my area, they're looking on how to lower their costs. They're afraid they won't be able to recover their costs in the price of the home. That's a valid concern, Paul. I think it's a totally valid concern. And we're going to talk towards the end of the webinar today about some things you can do to help with that and some options you can give. 
Um, Paul also mentioned uh, how to market technology seems to be a primary issue. I agree with that. How do you show, if you, if you fully outfit the model home, what can you do to help the customer understand the value that comes with that house now? How can you show them what this stuff is that uh, is in the home without making it feel like it's too much? And you've only got a limited window, right? It could be the um, dealer that's doing it. Uh, you, you know, your salesperson might be doing it. It might be the builder salesperson that's doing it. Either way, you've got to be able to have um, a way to talk and show it to your customers so that they get excited about it and want to buy it. And we'll talk about that. Again, we've got some solutions here. Uh, Joseph says, what if a builder says, I don't want to tie my home buyer into having to pay a monthly fee for the services that they can get free from Amazon? Really great question, Joe. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. So we'll hold on to that. Let's talk about some real world examples. So um, Madison, Lennar, biggest home builder in the nation right now. I guess they've merged with, the, with another company or bought another company and that made them officially the largest home builder. They went out and they launched a, what they called a smart home solution through Amazon, right? Tell us about that. Yeah, so this made a uh, huge waves in the builder market. This was a press release that came out uh, June of last year. And so Lennar actually partnered with Amazon um, so definitely this will hopefully help address uh, the question that was related to Amazon about how they were going to become the world's first Wi-Fi certified smart home. So essentially what they decided to do was partner with Amazon and create this smart home package that was standard across all of their homes across the nation that really just included a lot of uh, what I like to call shiny objects. So these are objects that, you know, work really great, might have even a standalone app, but they're not really connected into a platform. So Lennar, for example, chose to implement a Kivo lock, a Honeywell Wi-Fi Lyric thermostat, and a Ring doorbell. All those devices on their own, you know, that's great. Um, but one of the things that I think Lennar really failed to really understand was the need for their customers to also have security within their homes. So we looked at this earlier when we were looking at the 40% of homeowners who want some type of uh, security platform within the first year. You know, 40%, it could even be higher, upwards to 50 and 60%. So for those homeowners who are wanting um, a complete security package and having all of these devices connected in their home, they're really not able to get that experience because uh, Lennar has installed all of these single point solutions. So for you all and you as a dealer might be you know, working in some of these Lennar homes, for homeowners who are wanting security, they're having to replace all of these devices that they just purchased um, with their new Lennar home, which really isn't um, a great home buying experience. Um, one of the good things that actually came out of this, though, is just obviously um, awareness. So by having Lennar, the largest home builder, um, implementing some type of standard, um, obviously other builders are wanting to fall in line with that. And so that means there's a great opportunity for you guys as dealers to really go out and help, um, really help set that standard. So yeah, Jeremy, going on with these um, single point solutions, you know, instead of having a separate app for each one of these devices, a, an app for your lock, an app for your light, app for security, um, where you're essentially creating these de data silos because none, none of these devices are talking to one another. Really the benefit of having a standard platform and choosing devices that are compatible with that platform is that all of these devices are talking to one another and you're really creating a smarter home uh, for that homeowner. I totally agree. And I think, you know, we've talked a lot on previous webinars, if you've attended our other webinars, about the, the importance of the smart ecosystem. I could have a door window sensor on my door that tells me when the door is open and chimes on the panel. And it will also, um, you know, set off the alarm if the alarm goes off. But if it's part of an ecosystem and the light bulb I buy, if I buy a light bulb that works within the ecosystem, 
is part of that ecosystem. I could say, hey, when door open, turn on light. I could say, hey, when door left open, when door left open, turn up, turn off the thermostat. You know, things like that. When you're part of an ecosystem, your devices work together. I think that's the difference between a connected home and a smart home. A connected home has a bunch of connected devices, but really what Lennar did, in my personal opinion, is they basically provided, they basically bought some items out of an Amazon shopping cart and delivered them to your home for you. Instead of creating a true smart solution that works together and ha turned that home into a smart home, they simply bought some items for you and, and lumped it into your home loan. That's not the right way to do it in my experience. What you wanna do is you wanna create a system that works all together under a single platform so they have one app to control it all, one set of voice control, one watch app, one, you know, one platform for all of it. And the, the user experience on that really, really increases. And of course, when the user wants to add more, I mean, your, your example earlier of what if they want to upgrade to security? Well, now they're going to have to buy something different if they, if they don't have this solution. But with our solution, they, bought, they say, I want to upgrade to security? Sure, why not? In fact, DR Horton is a great example of that, right? They actually said, we are going to put a smart system into every single home that is security and life safety ready. So I want to show you this real quick. So this is, the, this is what DR Horton's standard offer is for every single home. They get the seven inch uh, touchscreen pan IQ panel. They get the alarm.com sky bell. They get an Amazon echo. They get a light. They get an echo dot. They get the Honeywell Z-Wave thermostat. They get the alarm.com mobile app. They get a Z-Wave lock. They get all of that. In fact, I want to pull up their website right now. If you haven't seen this right now, it's drhorton.com slash smart hyphen home. Um, and you can kind of see everything they're doing. I want to play this video. And I, I know videos don't play tremendously well on webinars, so bear with us a little bit. But hopefully you can capture a little bit of what it is, and you can always watch it on your own uh, later if you like. So. At Dio Horton, we're always focused on delivering the best value, regardless of brand and regardless of price point. Smart home technology is the latest thing that really is just going to enable our customers to have an easier way of life. We wanted to ensure that this ecosystem of products were all going to work together to have a better home uh, experience uh, for our consumers. And that's what America's Builder is all about. DR Horton is launching a smart home technology um, package for uh, all of our homes that we're building recently. It's called Homing Connected. <coughs> we wanted to make sure that the products that we selected were going to work for you. We wanted to make sure that the way you lived your life, the way you wanted to control your home, that no matter what we put in here, it was going to have to meet that need, which is you. Smart home really is about uh, things that just happen. It's not necessarily just a series of clicking buttons and making things and happen. Actually being a smart home and things happening on their own. It was all about the automation. It was all about the things that were going to be able to uh, be delivered to our consumer in a way that they were going to be able to simply and intuitively use in their home. So when you are leaving the house, you can have a scene execute that will lock your front door, turn off the lights, it doesn't get limits that. All without having to think about it. It's this concept of bringing smart home technology together, connecting it all to itself, but also to our homeowners as well. The heartbeat of it all is the Alarm.com software platform. The beautiful, simple software that's going to live on your smartphone, tablet, or your PC to be able to control your home is connected ecosystem. So that you can engage with your home, whether you're sitting on the couch in your living room or you're 500 miles away, you're always connected to your home. You're able to control and monitor what needs to be you. So with each component of the package, we actually wanted to make sure that what are the homeowners touching? What are they actually using on a day-to-day -day basis? Not what's, you know, just real attractive and a real cool gadget that does this real cool thing. We kind of jokingly call that the Christmas morning effect, right? Or it's this real cool thing and you play with it one time and then you never touch it. Today it's all about different uh, different forms of control. Everyone has their preference. Some people want things to just automatically happen. Other people want to be able to uh, look at their smartphone and make it happen. And uh, some like to use their voice. You can expand the system on your own very, very simply and very affordably and very easily.
if they do decide to go and buy a bunch of Wi-Fi devices, we speak that. If they go and decide to buy a bunch of Z-Wave devices, we speak that as well. We've, we've talked a lot about the products and the research that we went through, the testing and everything else. But what, what was absolutely driving us through all of this was you, the consumer. We're so fortunate every day, though, that we're working to be able to put houses on the ground that people can afford and can have a place to live with their family. But who's better to create America's smart home than American Builder? So I think that's a great video. And I, as, as you guys have been watching it, you're plugging in your questions here. And I think a question I'd like to talk about right now is, is Patrick's question. He says, my current challenge on our on the builder program with qualitasandalarm.com is the duplication of efforts by HVAC electricians and then us. Streamlining the process uh, takes months to complete and is a real challenge. Um, so currently HVAC, HVAC installed the thermostat because they don't know how to use the alarm.com one and it can't work until it's set up by the homeowner. So then we got to control lights and things like that. You know, how do we streamline that process? Let me share with you what DR Horton did. The first thing they did is they recognized that they wanted to have a platform that would be able to grow. No matter what the consumer wanted, they would have it. So they made the decision that they wanted the IQ panel because it had all the right radios. It could connect to all the right devices. Uh, you heard in the video, they mentioned Z-Wave a couple times as well as other things. That with the heart of the home being the IQ panel and the heartbeat being the alarm.com app now allows you to control this entire ecosystem. But then they went further and said, okay, you know what, if you want to be a, bill, a, a contractor, an electrical HVAC contractor for DR Horton, you are required to use this thermostat. This is the thermostat we've chosen for our build, okay? And they mandated it from the builder. So to answer part of your question, Patrick, when you start talking with the builder, instead of just talking with one builder in your area, say, hey, let's talk about how we can mandate this particular thermostat so that it's in every single home as part of the build. Because you're right. It is a big waste if the HVAC guy comes in and installs a thermostat and then, you know, three months later, you come in or however long that is, you come in and you remove that thermostat and put in your own Z-Wave thermostat in its place. So Dr. Horton said, we're going to mandate this Z-Wave thermostat for all of our builds. Same thing for some of the light switches and the door lock. Instead of installing that other door lock, we're going to mandate this quick set smart code 888. And so every home is going to get that. And if you are the locksmith, or the person that's installing door hardware for doing a DR Horton home, as part of your contract, you'll be required to put this particular lock in. So it's, it's part of that process of working with a builder and not just simply saying, hey, I can offer a solution. You're not a carpet guy, right? You're not just gonna come in and say, hey, I could put carpet down, it costs this much. You as a technology person, and remember what the pain points were back in the very beginning of this presentation. One of those pain points were, we want you to be the expert. So you be the expert. Come in and talk to them and say, I'm an expert. Let me share with you what you're going to want to do. As the expert, we know that you're wasting money on old thermostats. They're just going to get thrown away. Don't do that. No builder wants to waste money. Okay? You're wasting money on door locks. They're just going to get pulled off and turned into smart door locks. Don't do that. You know, you're wasting money on this or you know, smart light bulbs or smart light switches or things like that. Let's work together to figure out the right solution for you. And I'm happy to come and help train your electrician on this stuff. So they're installing the stuff that makes my job easy. I'm happy to come talk to your guy that does your doors and, and talk to him about the locks and consult with him on the right lock so that he does the right one. So again, my job comes easy. Imagine for a moment, if you're the installer and you are in charge of installing a brand new build and you come in and there's already a Z-Wave lock, several Z-Wave lights, a Z-Wave thermostat all ready for you. And all your installer has to do is pair them with the panel and they start working with the back end. How much easier is your install? How much faster is your stuff? How much lower is your overhead? It, it works really, really well. Your challenge is gonna be, how do I convince my builder that this needs to happen? And part of that's gonna happen by you becoming the, the, the expert on this stuff. Madison, anything to add on that? No, I definitely think that working with the builder to create some type of standard so that they're really just turning around and educating their subcontractors on what needs to be installed is definitely the way to go. Um, as you mentioned with DR Horton, they've already selected these products. 
So you as the integrator are just coming in after the fact and learning in all these devices and truly making it a smart home so that when the homeowner moves in, you know, everything is good to go. You might be coming in um, with that post-close appointment and delivering their Wi-Fi devices like the SkyBell um, or if they've chosen like a voice integrated device. Um, but other than that, everything should be just set up and really easy to go for the homeowner. Yep, absolutely. Now, we don't, well, there's lots and lots of questions, and we're going to do our best to try to answer all of them, but we also have a lot of stuff we want to share with you guys. And, and just presenting the problem isn't going to be enough today because we want to make sure that before you leave the webinar today that you actually walk away with things you can actually do, things you can actually say, and, and make this a reality. So I'm going to dive right into a few of those. Um, oh, we already got that. So let me get to my screen to forward the presentation. There we go. Let's talk specifically about features and benefits. So when you go in to the builder to talk about what you can offer, what are the things you're going to say I can do that other people can't? The first thing you want to talk about is that what uh, D.R. Horton called the heart of the home. Um, I call it the brain of the home. It's the 7-inch HD touchscreen IQ panel. It looks amazing. We talked about how important looks were earlier in the aesthetics of, of technology. It's all in one, so all the radios and things you need are installed inside the system. You don't have to worry about snapping in daughter cards and changing things up and taking things apart and configuring stuff. It's all in there. So you're literally running the power wire and then, it, and then you're good to go. Intuitive user interface makes it easy to use. So that solves a lot of your consumer, con um, consumer experience concerns. So if the builder's worried about something um, you know, not working well or not looking good or things like that, you can put their their mind to ease with this 7-inch uh, HD panel. And right after that is the mobile app. The Alarm.com mobile app, every single device is all now accessible in one app. If you decide with your builder that you want to offer uh, those Rachio sprinkler systems or you want to offer, you know, a music solution or you want to offer Light, blocks, thermostats, garage openers, security, light safety, everything's all together in one app. And that means that no matter what platform they're on, no matter what operating system they're using, they're going to be able to access that home remotely. And it's super easy to use. And hopefully if you're on this call and you've been using the alarm.com system for a while, you, you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, it really does tie everything together so well, whether it's cameras, it's uh, security, it's, you know, all those categories we were talking about. Another way of using this stuff is voice control, and this is becoming more and more popular. You saw on the list of desired technologies that builders were looking for. Voice control is really increasing and will continue to increase. And whether they choose Amazon Echo or Google Home, you know, you've got that capability built right into Alarm.com. You just simply enable those skills and it makes it tremendously easy to use. I'll give you some great examples of my own home if you don't have, pers you know, personal experience with this. Last night decided to sit down and watch a movie with the kids. Gathered the whole family around. We sat down and I said, oh, I better mute my Amazon Echo before she does it for real. I've got one here on my desk. Um, I said, uh, you know, uh, Alexa, run the family movie night scene. And it locks my front, back, and side doors, closes my garage so that just in case, we, weren't downstairs, we were downstairs, so just in case one of the kids had left those open or we had left those open or unlocked, it would do that. And then it turns off the basement light, the basement hall light, the built-in lights above our TV area, uh, the, all the lights in my son's bedroom and the bathroom and all, basically all the lights that are around in the room. And then it turns on the fireplace because we have that on a Z-Wave switch as well. So we literally had all the kids sitting there with one voice command, shut down all the energy in the house except for the fireplace. And then I turned the TV on with the remote and was able to put on the movie and we were able to watch the movie together. It was a lot of fun. Could I have gotten up and told the kids, hey, kids, you grab that light. I'll get this light. Go upstairs and check the, the locks on the door, things like that. We could have done all that. And it's not a laziness thing, but it is kind of fun. And people want to do this. And when, that, when you have that kind of sizzle to share with your customer, hey, yeah, if you're going to bed, instead of saying, you know, instead of going and, and walking over your panel and swiping over to the locks page and then checking, you know, locking your door, swiping up, locking another door, swiping a lock, doing that, or pressing the lock all button, you know, or going and logging into your app and pressing this, you could just simply say, Hey, Alexa, lock all my doors, and she'll do it. You know, it's really nice to have that as an extra option. It doesn't mean it's the only option. If they want to use the panel, they've got the panel. If they want to use the app, they've got the app. But they've got all of the above to interact with their system. And we're going to help unlock that for you, Mr. Builder, because
because here at ABC Security, we care about how convenient uh, the system is for your homeowner. And that being able to say that with confidence to know that whether it's the touchscreen or the app or voice control really plays in well to you. And then it's not just those things, but because you've got everything all working together, you've got some extra really cool features like Alarm.com's Geo Services. Imagine being able to tell your, your builder, oh yeah, if your customer forgets to, if your homeowner forgets to arm the system, we'll remind them. We send them a little text message. And when they arm the system, a, a lot of automation can go in place. You can make something that says, when you arm the system, lock my front door, close my garage, turn off my thermostat, turn off the fireplace, you know, arm the security system, do all these things for me. And because of all that automation, you get some great energy management. So your home is now more energy efficient. Again, I'll give you an exact, a, a, a personal experience of my own. My power bill, and we don't have high power bills here in Utah, but my power bill for my moderate size home was about $150 a month, $125, $150 a month. We put in some smart lighting um, all when we finished our basement, got all Z-Wave light switches. Um, we have our alarm.com thermostat. Um, and then we put in Z-Wave switches on the fireplaces and some of the other things too, some lamps, lamp modules and things like that. When I arm my system, it automatically shuts, in away mode, it shuts off all that stuff. It also helps the, you know, arm my security system, lock my doors, close my garage, things like that. But we've noticed that our power bill went from about 125 uh, to 150 down to 60 to 80 per month. That's a huge jump and more than made up for any kind of monthly fee um, that you might be charging your customer. You know, so I'm not saying that those kind of savings are, are everywhere and really depends on how often they use it, how diligent they are about it, and how many devices they're adding. If you only add one light switch, you know, or one smart light bulb on the front porch, you're certainly not going to see those. But the more you add, the more you do, the more savings you're going to see. So as you consult with the homeowner, as you consult with the builder, it gives you a great chance to say, I can help you with some of this energy management if it's important to you. And the more you do, the better, the better results you're going to see. There's also really cool features like Bluetooth touch to disarming. You know, my wife never armed the system. For those of you who've been on webinars with us before, you've heard us talk about this. My wife, my wife never armed the system before because she's like, we live in a safe neighborhood. Why do I care? Now she arms it all the time because she doesn't want to have to disarm it when she gets home. She doesn't want to have to unlock the front door. She wants to just walk in the house. And that Bluetooth disarming is a really nice, convenient feature. When she comes home, the front door unlocks, the lights turn on, the thermostat resumes its schedule, and she didn't have to touch a button. She left her phone right in her purse. And you could, you could pair up to five phones with that. You've also got, we kind of touched on this earlier, but rules and scenes, okay? You can add any device and create this great chain, chain reaction. So I want, as part of my away scene, to arm my system and lock my door. Maybe you also want lights to turn on or off. Maybe you also want the thermostat to be set to a certain level, things like that. You can do all of that and create multiple scenes. Like I mentioned earlier, I made a, a family movie night scene and it really is a fun thing for my family to, to engage that scene and, and start family movie night. There's also disarmed photos. So you've got that visual verification when someone gets home that it is them. You know what time, you know who it was, you see the, their, their face. It, you can send that picture to multiple devices. If you want that text message to go to you and the wife and the oldest kid um, that, you know, the little, the little kid got home from school, you know, you could do that. Or if it's in a work scenario, scenario, this is a great solution. But, you know, from a builder perspective, you don't care about this stuff so much unless it helps them sell a house. And if you're using imagery like this to show them and you know that they're gonna, you're going to show the same imagery to their customers and their home buyers, they're going to be able to say, yeah. You're going to go buy that other home from another house, from another builder, but are you going to be able to get this kind of feature? Are you going to get these, these kind of things? And the answer is usually going to be no. Um, the next feature is encryption. Encryption, encryption security is real security. Most people are still not offering encrypted security. You know, if you're going up against another uh, dealer in your neighborhood to try and win that builder, you know, the fact that you can say, my sensors are encrypted. I've got power GRS line encryption. I've got a full line of devices. You know, I'm going to protect your customers against hackers. Most people can't say that. So you'll be able to go in with a strong solution that's going to protect consumers, especially those uh, millennial consumers that really care about that kind of stuff. Notification. Getting an arming reminder um, that your system wasn't armed by 11 o'clock at night. You want to make sure you're always arming it at night. Or maybe a sensor left open. Um, you know, I love these. My kids are constantly leaving doors open. Uh, whether it's the medicine cabinet or the back door or the front door 
or whatever, I get a little text message immediately and we can go and close that door to make sure that we're not wasting energy, to make sure that we're not exposing our home to things that we don't want it to be exposed to, things like that. System events as well for notifications, power went out, low battery in a sensor, you know, things like that. So again, part of this whole thing, if you don't have a system that works with all the devices in one, how is your system going to send you a notification that there's a low battery in the sensor if the platform you're using is something different? Okay, so all of this tying together makes a really, really powerful solution. Um, there's also advantages for you as the dealer as well. You know, we talked earlier about the importance of making that customer experience easy, making support easy. On the panel, you get on-screen help videos that will help reduce the number of support calls you get. Those videos cover the top reasons people call, how to arm my system, how to connect Wi-Fi, how to create a user, things like that. And if you have your own things you want to add, you can load your own videos onto the panel. And so that way the customer can self-help themselves. Yeah, Jeremy, just wanted to add in there there yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, so I think one of the the reasons that DR Horton actually chose the Qualsys panel standard in all of their homes was actually this feature right here. They really saw a lot of value with these on-screen help videos, not only to reduce support calls, but they were able to load in all of their own content as well and really use it as a, a marketing tool so that when a new homeowner goes into a new DR Horton home, they have a, a video playing really welcoming them to the, the experience and setting the messaging that DR Horton wants. Um, so when you're meeting with builders and, and talking about the, uh, the Qualsys panel, definitely talk about that as a capability because that's really a, a differentiator um, when using this type of product. Thank you, Madison. I really appreciate that. You know, we we were working with, uh, you know, DR Horton up to build some of those on-screen help videos. And there's a lot of questions um, here that you guys are asking about how DR Horton structured their stuff and things like that. I think we want to address that towards the end here uh, to make sure that people get all their um, their questions answered. So that's that's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. I, one one question Archie's asking is, how do I get in contact with the builders directly? Um, it's a really great question. And to be perfectly honest. It's going to be different for everyone. You know, for me, if it were me in your shoes, one of the things I would do is go talk, you know, go down to the community where it's being built. You know, let me talk to the manager. I want to show you what I can do. I want to show you what I can offer. Um, you know, who's in charge here? Let me talk to your regional vice president or whatever. You know, some of that just feet hitting the street type stuff. And a lot of you have salespeople that can help do some of that to start with, you know, is a great way to get started. Um, there's also lots of builder conventions. Doesn't hurt to attain attend those, do some networking, things like that. Um, if you guys have other ways that you've gotten in touch with builders in your market, we'd love to hear them, share those ideas, and, and maybe Archie and others could benefit from those. Um, let's see, there's so, there's so many questions in here. I'm trying to pull out the ones that are talk relevant. To the superintendent of subdivision. Oh, talk to a superintendent of the, of the subdivision. Thanks, David. That's, good. That's a, good, uh, a good tip there. So David says, to talk to the superintendent of the subdivision, um, that person is probably in charge of making the buying decisions, uh, would be a great person to talk to and say, hey, do you already have a security solution? Do you already have a smart home solution? You know, would you mind, you know, give me a few minutes of your time and I want to show you a couple things that might turn your head, might make you want to, you know, choose me instead. Um, you know, or if you don't have one, you know, do it. Um, Ryan's asking who's the best person to talk to title-wise. I think superintendent's a great one to do. Um, JP asked, can I get a copy of the deck for this presentation? So we're actually planning, several of you have been asking this question. We're actually planning on taking this, this deck, this uh, presentation here, and we're going to modify it slightly to make it applicable for you to take to a potential builder. Um, and we'll put it on the dealer portal, on the Qualsys dealer portal, and you'll be able to download it and use it along with some of the other tools and, and assets we put on there. So we're going to show you those in just a moment. Um, uh, Jerry has another great idea, too. In the U.S., you can join your national NAHB chapter, um, National Association of Home Builders. Uh, so there's local chapters. Visiting those meetings and joining up would be a really, really great um, way. Tiffany says, I'm a member of my region and state home builders association. Great. Again, those are great opportunities to meet the people that are making the decisions or at least get some contact information that allows you to get in touch with that superintendent or whoever that that uh, buyer is uh, for that stuff. So 
Um, really great stuff, guys. Keep that, keep that content going. Thank you. I want to talk about seeding the market. There's a lot of companies out there that are marketing this stuff. Amazon did a really good job marketing their stuff with Lennar, which is why Lennar said, look, we're doing with an all Amazon solution. Okay. Best Buy, if you walk in Best Buy, this is an example of a Best Buy shelf. There is lots and lots of smart home stuff. Target, Home Depot, Lowe's. I mean, the list goes on and on. Everyone seems to be getting into it. And that's just the retail solutions. Think about the digital solutions. You can't get an email from Target or Best Buy or Walmart without some kind of smart home device in it. And we all know, because we understand Z-Wave technology and PowerG and uh, Wi-Fi and these kind of technologies, that if the consumer buys one of those technologies they see in the ad or on the shelf, it's most likely not going to work with the system, which means that while it might be fun, might be cool, when they start adding more devices, that experience goes down for all the reasons we've already talked about, right? That whole ability to have a, a, a whole ecosystem. So rather than try and combat this, my suggestion to you is this. Let them seed the market. Let them do the marketing for you. Let them put all that stuff out there. If you create an established relationship with your home buyer, okay, and you're able to talk to them, let these guys create the category and device awareness for you, and then you can come in and get the sale. For example, if you tell your home builder or you tell your home buyer, one of the things we do is we can replace all the switches in the home with Z-Wave switches or with Z-Wave light bulbs so that all of your lighting is automated. The cost is going to be X. Chances are there will be very few home buyers that will say, yes, I'll do it. Most of them are going to say, that's good to know. I'll think about it. But you know what's going to happen? The next time they go to, you know, Lowe's and they see that smart light bulb, they're going to see that. And instead of putting it in their shopping cart, they're going to say, you know what? I kind of am ready for that smart light bulb. Maybe we should call our guy back and say, hey, can you just do the front porch for us? You know, let them market because maybe they're not ready today, but three months from now, six months from now, they might be ready for that smart device. Okay. You really create a road to revenue for yourself by offering a, a solution that has a full portfolio that is constantly re revealing new releases. And whether you choose to do your devices and your upgrades one-time charges as, hey, um, you know, buy a light bulb for, a, you know, X dollars today and I'll mail it to you. Or you choose to say the light bulb's free, it's only a dollar a month. Or maybe it's both. It's, uh, you know, hey, it's $10 for the light bulb and then a dollar per month for the service. You know, whatever you want. You've got in-app upsells in the Alarm.com app. You've got the connections emails. I mean, Alarm.com did a tremendous job of creating some of the upsell demand for you, haven't they, Madison? Yeah, absolutely. So these are all things that you can enable and uh, create within our partner portal, but it really gives you a way to stay in front of customers and really make sure that they're aware of all the products and services that you offer. So with these in-app upsell offers, these are just additional cards that show within the mobile app for the customer, and they can click into those cards and learn a little bit more about, let's say, video cameras, if they don't already have videos, cameras on their account. And then from there, they can actually contact you to get those devices installed in their home. So really, just about staying in front of the, the homeowner and really making sure that they're aware that you offer the same things that they're hearing about from, from Best Buy and, you know, Amazon and other um, resources out there. And of course, when, when they buy it from you, not only do you get the revenue, but it's going to be connected. It's going to work. They've got someone to support it. Part of the problem with the Lennar solution has been, at least from what we've been told, is that after the sale, they were saying, well, hold on, this thing's not working. Can you send someone out? The builder's like, I don't have anyone to send out. I mean, I didn't do that. That was like an Amazon thing. You basically just bought an Amazon shopping cart, right? So you, however, are completely different. You know, you remember one of the complaints early, you know, in the conversation we had uh, a few minutes ago was, uh, you know, no support after the fact. What, where's my support? Well, you guys are offering support. You do have the ability to troubleshoot things, to help things out, and to help you with that troubleshooting and reduce your cost. Alarm.com and Qualsys have really provided a lot of great remote access. You reduce the number of truck rolls. It used to be you'd have to drive a truck out to figure it out. Now you can do almost everything from the Alarm.com remote toolkit. You need to tweak the volume on the panel or change the brightness. You want to add a security device and mail it to them. You want to, you know, change a setting or add a user. You can do all that remotely, and you don't have to drive a truck to the customer's house 
and get inside their panel and do things anymore. You're going to improve your response time. You're going to improve the customer delight. Um, and in many cases, you know, especially on things like adding users and, you know, things that are covered by the help videos, they can even do it themselves on this stuff. So there really are a lot of benefits uh, that we provide to you as a dealer to help with this. Now, we want to talk for a minute about the model home program because I know that's something that a lot of you guys are asking about. How do I get involved in this? How do I get started? So Alarm.com and Qualsys have come together and created this model home program where every model in the community will get a really robust system. You get the IQ Panel 2 Plus uh, with a 2-1 PowerG kit with two vanishing door window sensors and a PowerG motion. You also get the Alarm.com Smart Service Stat. You get your choice of either an indoor or an outdoor video camera. You get a Z-Wave door lock, your choice of either Yale, Quick Shutter, Slag. Uh, you get a garage door opener, and you get the SkyBell Wi-Fi doorbell, doorbell camera. So it's a pretty robust solution, and you get all of that for free as long as each there, there's a ratio of one model home for every 25 uh, homes in the community. So, you know, and you'll go through the Alarm.com portal, and, and not to get too much in the weeds on this, you'll go through the Alarm.com uh, process to upload all your information about the community into there. And once you've completed that, we will then mail you out this stuff that you can use. Now, if you've got a job, we, we encounter this all the time, where you've got to do the model home install tomorrow or next week or something like that, and you, you don't have time to get all that stuff done, go out and buy it. Buy it from distribution, go install it, fill out the information uh, with alarm.com and, and Qualsys and get all that stuff, and then we'll mail you replacements and you could take those and put them into another home in the community. Um, Madison, anything to add on that program? Um, no, not at all. That's definitely a, a great program to really take advantage of, just to showcase the uh, the sizzle of what you can provide the prospective homeowner in their future home. Yep. So the other thing, if you look in the GoToWebinar control panel, there are two handouts. So we've got the model home program, which is a flyer that looks like this. This is a great program, a, a great flyer you can use to take to a builder, show it to them and say, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to show you that this is what I'm going to install into every model home you have. Um, and then there's also the FAQs of the program of how to get started and what to do and things like that. We do have a few questions here. Um, how would this benefit a dealer who sells their account to their monitoring company? Great question, Jeff. If you are building this up, let's say you've got, um, you know, the ability to get more leads, you know, obviously that's going to create more sales that you can sell. Uh, from a support standpoint, your monitoring company is probably going to either pay you a higher multiple or just be happier with your, with your account because you can do a lot of that remote access and a lot of that full system with them. For, for me personally, if I'm in your shoes, the biggest thing I'm thinking is, I'm going to get more leads and I'm going to get more upfront device attach rates. If I can show a full system to my, to my builder and get them to say, I want to buy more of this stuff, like DR Horton did, right? DR Horton started with just saying, we just want to do a security system and that's it. And now they're doing a whole lot of extra stuff for every single home and they're mandating that at every single home. There's several other builders that are doing the same thing where they're saying, hey, I'm going to put it in every single home. And there's dealers out there that are doing this. One example I can think of is DFW Security. DFW Security down in Texas um, told me that one of the things they're doing is they're working with their builders and they put everything in the customer's home. I'm talking everything. Video doorbell, sensor on every door and window, uh, flood sensors under the sink, you know, door lock, thermostat, cameras. I mean, they're doing all of it. And they're even including the first few months of monitoring. In fact, I think it's the first three years of monitoring with every single home. So the customer literally walks into a full, full, full smart home, okay? Now there's not a tremendous opportunity for upsells when you've given them everything you could possibly give, but they're getting all of that, building that into the home loan, and they're getting all of the revenue up front. And the, the take rate they're getting is tremendous. They're getting customers saying, yeah, I'll sign up for the service because I know I don't have to start paying for it for three years. So there's, and, and again, we're gonna talk about some of that stuff in a minute, but to help with that, help with some of this adoption, because I know that, that is a concern some of you guys have. Alarm.com has created a new builder service plan. Madison, you want to describe what that is? Yeah, and I actually saw a question in the in the chat that asked, um, is there a monthly fee attached to uh, the Alarm.com model home program? <clears throat> 
And the answer to that is yes. So we're giving away um, all of that equipment for free up front, um, but there it would be required to be on some type of paid service plan for that particular model home account. Um, similar to that, but for all of the other homes in the communities, we've actually developed this uh, builder automation service plan. So before we launched our alarm.com builder program earlier this year, uh, just going to a lot of the, the builder industry events and talking with a lot of you all who already have relationships with builders, we really wanted to get an idea of what the needs were um, when we were developing this builder program. And one of the needs was the ability to offer some type of smart home technology at no cost. Um, so for builders specifically, um, for you all to implement with builders, we developed this builder automation service plan that is $0 activation and $0 monthly cost um, for up to 36 months. So for three years, we're offering these six features that you see here at no cost. So that includes locks, thermostat, light switches, Lutron integration, voice control through either Amazon Echo or Google Home, and lastly, the doorbell camera with SkyBell, uh, live view only, so zero recorded clips with that. And the great thing, obviously, about with Alarm.com is that you can, um, you know, whether the builder has a relationship with Quickset, Schlage, Yale, same thing with the thermostats, we're a very open and flexible platform. So any of those devices will integrate and they can really tout that they have a smart home um, as a standard. And so this allows you the ability to really get in with the, the builder and offer something for free, but then also be able to meet with all of the homeowners. And as Jeremy mentioned, um, you have more, people that you're meeting with, more homeowners, and the opportunity for more revenue. And so this is kind of a standard. You're really wanting to upsell those homeowners to additional devices that you don't see here. And uh, we actually, as part of this program, to really make sure that it is, because we're giving something away for free, um, to really make sure that we are uh, getting uh, our, our recurring back in this. Um, Service providers do need to obtain a 40% upsell rate to a paid security plan within the first year. Um, we really feel that that's very easy to do. Most uh, service providers out there have upsell rates above 40%, um, but just something to really make sure that when you're going and meeting with builders, you have a great offering and you can offer that $0 um, offering that they're looking for. Yeah, and a lot of people are chiming in here saying, how come this isn't included in that, that is included in that? And I think the, the real easy answer for that is that allows you to create an upsell opportunity for you. When your customer says, well, I, I got the garage door, how come the garage door is included in this? You could say, well, I'd love to include the garage door. That comes with our paid service. You know, would you like to subscribe to that? And we could talk about that. Another person mentioned, well, can you do this without monitoring? Well, that's up to you. If you want to say, you know, I want to offer an alarm.com only account that doesn't go to the central station, it's essentially self-monitored. So if your security system goes off, you can get a text message, the siren's going to go off, but no cops are coming, no monitoring station's going to come over the two-way voice on the panel. That's up to you. And I think there's a good market for people out there that maybe want something like that. And then that allows you to say down the road, hey, Christmas is coming, you're probably going to do some traveling. Would you like to upgrade to our monitored security package and we'll watch the home for you while you're gone for your holiday travel? Okay, there's some tremendous opportunities for you, but one of the things we need you guys to do a little bit, and hopefully some of you are doing it already, uh, hopefully many of you are doing it already, is get out of the, this is the way we've always done it mentality. Because I think that there's a lot of people out there who are looking at things differently. They're expecting things differently. Um, and if you can show that you've got options and you've got ideas, uh, you've got different ways of doing things, um, that, you know, you're going to have a lot more flexibility to meet your, your builders and their homeowners or home buyers' demand. The other thing that's really nice about this is the model home program isn't just a way to get some free stuff, but it's a way to actually protect the model home. If you think about it, that's a tremendous asset for 
the builder themselves. Okay. And if you ask them, you know, a simple question to ask is, do you ever get any model home theft? Or do you ever worry about the actual model home and, and had problems with the model home? And they'll admit to you, many of them will admit, oh yeah, people leave the door unlocked, people leave a window open, people, you know, leave the air conditioner running on super hot all night long. And we spend a lot of money on model homes that we don't have to. Imagine instead if you've got a way to actually manage and take care of these model homes. And it allows you to manage this easily uh, for any vacant properties you have as well as any model homes you have. And it's a really, really powerful solution. Um, you can see on the list of all the different service plans the things that you can do with this. Um, it really does help the, the, the case for adding this kind of stuff as a standard offer instead of making it one of those things where you come in after the home has, has been purchased. Madison, anything to add on that? Yeah, with this as well, um, this is really giving you a look at utilizing our property management service plans, either for managing model homes or even vacant spec homes. Um, so just having, as Jeremy mentioned, the ability just from one dashboard using the Alarm.com platform to see, you know, are the model homes locked? Um, are all the lights turned off? Are they armed? They can even set user codes that can be applied across multiple model home locations. So really making, really creating efficiencies for the builder and something that you can definitely propose to them um, as kind of a differentiating feature of what you can provide. Um, just having the ability to create staff efficiencies for them. And then as Jeremy mentioned, if, if theft is a concern for them or even if they have issues with uh, cost of construction power, for example, with a lot of their vacant spec properties, they might have a thermostat that's already in, um, but they might have contractors or painters or you know different people coming in and out of these homes that might bump up the bump up or down the thermostat, and that might cost them a lot of money if you multiply that across you know hundreds of different homes. So having control of all of these different properties and even activating service ahead of time in some of these vacant properties, um, if the builder is willing to pay for monitoring so that they don't have theft and that they can control all of these properties, that's def definitely a, a differentiating feature that you can provide them. Yep, and it's, and it's all up to you, right? It's up to you and the builder. Talk about it. Consult with them. Would you like me to protect your spec home while, before you, you've sold them? Would you like me to protect your model home, you know, before you decide to, you know, close down the community and, and you know, consider it all done and, and sell that model home to somebody else? Because if so, um, I'll give you a special rate. Maybe you offer them a special discount to cover those until that, cert until that time period, you know, comes where they sell the house to somebody else. So, you know, again, consult with your builders. Find the right solution for them and for you. In some cases, they may really benefit from it. In some cases, they might say, you know what, it's not worth it to me. I don't want to spend, you know, $20 a month or whatever that amount is just to help with the thermostat because I know that I'm only spending an extra dollar per month in, in thermostat cost. But if it was, you know, if, they, if they've ever looked at it, I'm guessing that, you know, from a thermostat perspective and a theft perspective and a damage perspective, the, the risk there is so high that it would be worth it to the builder to spend a little bit of money to, to ensure that that stuff is protected. Um, there's also a real interesting comment here that Charles made. Um, he says, I'm sorry, but builders in my area want everything for free. Um, during the last building boom, everyone was giving away their equipment and, um, you know, it just, it just made for a disaster. And I can certainly understand that. Builders don't want to have to spend too much money for that. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And I, I also want to apologize to all of you on the line still because we've wanted this, this to be an hour long and it just there's so much content here I want to keep going so with your permission we're going to continue going a little bit longer and we'll try and pick up the pace because I know that we're well over the, the time mark we said it was but I think it's been beneficial and, we're, and from the comments we're getting and the, and the things that you're saying here I think you're still benefiting from it so from a recommendation standpoint um, one of the things we have on our dealer portal is a recommendation of what devices you should install um, you know, we give away a list of, of smart devices, but that certainly doesn't mean that that's every device you can install. If I'm in your shoes and I'm doing a model home, I want to have a door sensor on every single door, every single window. I want to put it in key places like medicine cabinets, children's bedrooms. Imagine when you walk into the model and you open up the, the kid's bedroom and it says Sarah's bedroom door open. 
And you can, the salesperson can explain, oh yeah, if the kid gets out of bed at night, you'll know it instantly. Like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oh yeah, if they get into the medicine cabinet, you'll get a text message instantly. It's like that kind of, comp, that kind of technology and smartness is going to help them sell some houses for sure. Flood sensors on every, you know, under every sink. Z-Wave deadbolt locks. List. And so there's a whole list of things along with a whole list of rules that, and um, services that you should make sure that that model home has as well to turn that into a real model home. And it really focuses on the interactivity and the protection of the model. The other thing uh, that we wanted to show is we've got a lot of tools for staff training, a lot of sales tools, a lot of scripting. Uh, we've got set demos. The question was asked earlier, how do I generate some interest? How do I market this stuff to my builder so they get excited? How do I market this stuff to, to the homeowners so they get excited? You know, we've got a, a script of six easy demos you can do that show the, the capabilities of the smart home and allow you afterwards, and you, literally, it's like the scripting. It's like, you know, your seven inch touchscreen does this, touch here. You know, then it shows this, touch that, let them try this, let them try that. It's written in a way that really helps them understand and, and see the stuff. And we've got a lot of other um, sales tools available as well. But I want to get into cost because it feels like a lot of people are talking about cost, which is, I, I get it. It's a total, it, it's a challenge. So I think there's two ways you can do this. And this is gathered from my own experience as well as the experience that many of our dealers have had with builders. I think there's two ways. You could do this as part of a loan or you could do it as a separate transaction. If you're doing it as a separate transaction, you're, it's really no different than any other lead you get from someone calling in, someone going on your website, someone referring a friend, things like that, right? Maybe it's more flexible for the, deal, for the builder. Uh, potentially allows for a greater level of customization. If they don't want to standardize something, they can, you know, allows the customer to choose it. Um, but that's going to mean that you're going to cover some, if not all of those upfront costs for equipment and installation, just as you do today. Okay. Again, this is no different from you getting a lead somewhere else. You potentially get decreased upgrades because if the customer um, has to spend more out of pocket upfront, they're already also thinking about the home that they're buying and the down payment they have and things like that. So that's going to low, you know, decrease your upgrades and it's going to lower your take rate. But if you can convince the builder to allow you to wrap this into the cost of the loan, which many of our dealers have been able to do, that's what DR Horton has done with their dealers uh, and their security dealers all across the nation doing DR Horton installs, um, there's less visible cost, okay? The consumer just knows that this is part of their home. The home buyer essentially is covering all the upfront cost of the equipment and the installation. So when you tell a home, a builder, it's going to cost this many dollars for the equipment and the installation and all my services, okay, that then is wrapped into the home loan. The builder isn't paying for it. You're not paying for it. Who's paying for it? The homeowner is, right? And that makes your system profitable from day one. That increases the number of upgrades you get because now since the customer's not pulling too much money out of their pocket, you know, they're going to be more willing to buy those extra things that perhaps the, the builder or the dealer didn't mandate. Uh, maybe you even want to include some of your short-term RMR in it. Maybe you want to say, hey, the monthly fee for the first three months or six months or year or three years or whatever it is, uh, is included. Okay? Maybe every home gets a system. Maybe you want to say this should be mandated like, like the Air Horton did for theirs. Uh, and that way it's part of, not only part of the loan and makes it easier from a transaction standpoint. They just know every time they build a home, they're sending a PO to you to come out and do that installation. But it also makes it easier from an accounting standpoint to know that they're always going to do it. So there are some questions you're going to want to ask and you're going to want to figure these out, you and your builders together. These aren't questions that I can answer for you. These aren't questions that Madison can answer for you. Are you going to do a set package or are you going to custom configure? Okay, talk about it with your builder. What would you prefer? Would it be easier just to create a set package that you offer that every single time and then I can come in afterwards just the same way as the carpet guy comes in and offers upgraded carpet you know, or you offer, you know, if the customer says, well, is this the only carpet options I can get? Well, no, I've got a guy who can come in and you can talk to him and, and look through the different samples and decide what you want. It's the same thing. You get to do the same thing. Who's going to pay for that equipment? Is the builder going to buy it from you? And therefore, um, you're later on going to, and they're going to put that into the home loan, or are you going to basically float them and you're going to put it in with the good faith that when the home sells, you will then get paid at that point and the builder then uh, sends you a check once they close. You know, you need to decide it. You need to figure it out. When is the system installed? Is it done during the build process? 
Is it done during the wiring process? Is it done after finished work? Is it done after the customer moves in? You know, what is the right solution there? I personally lean towards before the home closes, before the homeowner moves in, um, and kind of after finished work, although there's certainly from a wiring perspective, there's some good reasons to maybe make sure that part of the plan includes a power wire for certain things like cameras, uh, the panel, secondary tablets, things like that. But again, talking and consulting as the expert that you are, you'll be able to figure these out with your, with your builder. Can you offer upgrades? You know, are you going to do that? And how are you going to do that? Are you going to do it in the model home? Are you going to put a salesperson in every single model home? Some dealers do that. Are you going to set up a display in every single model home or in the garage or in the sales center where a dealer can come and talk to you or a homeowner can come talk to you and you've got a, a place to stand and, and to show off things? Are you simply going to train the model home salespeople? And then when they have something, uh, a customer that's interested, are they going to pass you a lead? And then that person comes down to your showroom. Uh, are you going to offer upgrades only through email after the thing's installed and done? You need to decide what you want to do and how you want to do it. What's the best way for you based on your staffing, based on your resources, based on your bandwidth, you know, that you can do the right way. Are you going to offer a contract or a non-contract? You know, if you're selling this to a, a, a dealer like a Brinks or a Monotron, sorry, not Monotron, that is Brinks, uh, like a Brinks or a Guardian or a Vector or another, you know, how are you going to do that? Are you going to, to sell that off? Are you going to keep it on your own? Do you want to offer a contract or do you want to say there's no contract and it's just month to month? You need to decide all these things. And as you decide these things with your builder, maybe you decide them for yourself and then guide the builder towards those decisions and say, this is what we offer. This is how we do it. The more you consult with them and become the expert with them, the more likely I think you are to be able to be uh, successful. Several people are asking, where do I find the sales tools? Where do I get this, these resources? Let's talk about those. There's a lot of resources available for our dealers. First off, Alarm.com is a great marketing portal. Uh, you guys can go there and get, create custom flyers and, and pamphlets and things like that for yourself. Uh, they've got a lot of sales training. They've got the academy training, the academy online. And in some cases, if you're close to a distribution center or um, other places we're doing it, they've got on-site training even um, in some locations as well. Qual says the same. It also has a lot of builder documentation. We've got our marketing flyer, our model home equipment flyer, FAQs, that script we talked about, recommended devices, uh, marketing pieces, all on there. And we've also got our own LMS or, or learning management system where you can go in and get trained. So if you have not already subscribed to our dealer portal, I'm going to type the, uh, the address in right now, uh, dealers. Oh, that's something up, dealers qualsys.com slash register. You can go on and register for access there and we'll be able to get you access to that. We've got a brand new video. I hope to show it today, but we didn't have it finished until probably about 10 minutes ago that we've actually just put on the dealer portal as well that you can use to show builders. Um, but we're here. We're ready to help. We are ready to, to help make this a reality for you, help take all of the opportunities you've got and turn them into success. Um, and, and we're not looking to steal your builder relationships. If you want to introduce us to your builder and have us help you close them, we do it all the time. Madison, you're, you're talking to builders all the time with a dealer to help close those deals, aren't you? I think she's on mute. That's okay. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yep, I was on mute. <laughs> okay. You're, I mean, you're, you're doing this all the time, right? You're always, you're talking to dealers and meeting with the builders and, and with the dealer together and, and figuring out the right pattern and the right solution and the right Absolutely. configuration for them. Yeah. So yeah, if I'm, any dealers are working with uh, or trying to work with, with builders in their local area, I'm happy to, to meet with anyone one-on-one, -on -one, also meet with the builders directly um, to really help try to win the business. Excuse me. Um, guys, we are, again, ready to help. We're ready to, to be here to do, you know, help you figure all this stuff out. People keep asking, when, are these slides going to be available? Again, if you didn't jump in at the very beginning of, of the webinar today, um, we are recording this. So we will publish this webinar um, and on our YouTube channel and then send you a link to it. So you'll be able to share that and look at it later. 
these slides, we're going to take these slides and make a modified version and put them on the dealer portal so that you can download them and use them in your approach to builders. So be watching for those on our builder tab. In fact, let me just go to our dealer portal real quick and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I go here, I'm going to go to dealers.qualsys.com. And when I get there, do, 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 there we go. Oh, it's going to ask me to log in. Once I've logged in, I've got training, download, support. Under downloads, you can see Builder. When I click on Builder, I've got this great new video about the Qualsys Builder program. Uh, and that's the, when I say Qualsys, it's Qualsys and Alarm.com together. Uh, we've got this great model home flyer, marketing flyer, FAQs, the script. And he, uh, let me just pull this up just so you can see an example of the script. You know, so you walk up, you want to demo the weather. Oh, your seven inch touchscreen panel displays today's weather in the upper right corner. Touch it to see a four day forecast and you touch the icon. And when you're done, swipe it away. Go ahead and try that out and let them do it. Pretty cool, huh? I glance at this after breakfast to help me decide what to wear for the day. And then you can move on to demo number two when you talk about sensors and uh, door, door leftover notification and a thermostat adjustment. So, you know, just having a little script that you can guide your people along, list the devices that you should install and why you should install them and where you should install them, rules that you should create, things like that. We've got a lot of resources available for you. Go check them out. Go play with them. And if you need questions, if you need something, if you need help, you're not sure what to do, we're here. Builder program at alarm.com. Builder program at qualsys.com. We are here and ready to help you. And we want to make sure that your experience with your builders is as good as it possibly can. And if there's a, a particular resource you don't have that you need, let us know. We may have it. We may be able to send it to you to help you prepare for your next meeting with your builders. Madison, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for taking so much of your time. I know that went over uh, the time that you had allotted for this, but I think it really benefited uh, but all the people that were on today. We have quite a few people on today, but I think it went really, yeah. really well. The questions yeah. were all fantastic. Um, we're, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar now. If those of you that um, want to stay on, if you didn't get a question answered that you wanted answered, stay on and we'll type in your, the answers right now for a few more minutes. But otherwise, thank you very much to Madison. Thank you very much to Kelsey and Lauren for answering questions for us. Um, and thank you to all of you for participating in today's webinar. We really appreciate your time and we look forward to working with you. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. everyone.